Hello, I'm Melvin Nicholson and welcome to my winter wonderland. Now, today I'm in the Lake District and to be more specific, at the moment, Shap. When we were driving north on the M6 to come off at Junction 40 uh, at Penrith, the snow that was settling on the trees in the woods and the forests around the motorway were absolutely spectacular. So we decided to come off at Junction 40 and head towards Shap. Now that gives you a twofold effect. First of all, it gives you height. Shap sits very, very high up, much higher than any of the surrounding countryside. And secondly, it's where you're likely to find all the snow, but still able to get to it on the main road as that's been gritted. So I've just pulled up and we've just seen a lovely tree and a composition of a little gate and a wooden uh, gate and a brick stone wall. And it just looks absolutely wonderful. But there is an image everywhere you look around here. So I'm going to get a shot now. Here it is. Hello. Now, we've driven on from Shap and we've headed towards Ullswater. And we're now at a place called Penruddick, or on the way to uh, Matterdale, actually, from Penruddick. Now, this is a lovely road that takes you from the main road through to Keswick down to Ullswater, which is about two miles that way. Now, I know this place. I've been here before, a couple of years ago. I spent a glorious day here with a friend of mine called Brian, and we shot some gorgeous trees, notably, these in the distance. I don't know if you can see them. Absolutely beautiful trees isolated in the snow. They make wonderful subjects. Let me just give this lens a quick wipe. So these trees back here, wonderful, isolated in the snow. So I've got the 5D Mark IV set up. I've got a 70 to 200 lens, which I actually tend to use quite a lot in landscapes. I love the compression and the perspective that it gives and it also allows me to shoot from long distance and isolate things like trees as opposed to getting up close with a wide angle lens. So I'm currently shooting, for those of you that want the facts and figures, shooting at f8, ISO 100, 250th of a second, and I'm shooting a focal length of about 190 mil. Now I can shoot at 200 mil on a 70 to 200, but I tend to find you're just pushing the lens that little bit too much. So I tend to shoot at about 190 mil, it just allows for the image to be that little bit sharper to my mind. But this place here is absolutely gorgeous. And the sun's just gone in, the sun is somewhere up here behind me. There it is. Um, but everywhere around us now, everywhere is just gray. Gray, 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 dark gray skies. Oh, a bit of blue, a bit of blue fit dads, as Peter Kay would say. But I don't mind that, I don't mind the lack of light. It certainly makes uh, focusing on the trees a lot easier. Um, in terms of not having to worry about shadow, I can really get quite close in on a tree without having to uh, worry about cropping out or having to cut off the shadow itself. Um, but my, what a place. Now in the distance, you will see, back there, Tony Higginson. Somewhere in the distance, he's also uh, recording a YouTube video. So Tony and I have come out today to get some snow shots. You probably get conditions like this probably once a year, once every two years. Pure white out, absolutely gorgeous weather. And the advantage of this place is that we're quite high up here. We're much higher up than the lake. And as a result, you get the snow, you get you know many inches of snow, and, uh, but it's still passable. And it's still passable on the road all the way down to Woolswater. And one of the reasons why is because you get the gritters out. Woo, to the gritters. Because <laughs> without them, we won't be here, or we'd have to walk several miles to get here. So, uh, what a place, what a place. Anyway, I'm gonna get a couple of shots of this tree here. There's a lone tree just about here, and I'm gonna get a couple of shots of it, and here they are.
Well, I've just wandered all the way up from right down there, right down there. And it's near vertical in parts and huge snow drifts. So literally up to my knees in snow. Now, I've come up pretty much to the top of the hill now. And the tree that I was shooting before is now over here. But uh, guess who I bumped into? <laughs> Hello. Tony Higginson. Now, Tony and I are out today, as I've already mentioned, and uh, we both see things differently. So I'll see a tree, Tony will see a tree. Quite often they're not the same one. <laughs> <laughs> Tony will be in one direction and I'll go in another. So uh, Tony's also filming a YouTube video. I'll, uh, I'll put it in at the end of my video here so that you can click on it and, uh, and watch Tony's as well. Uh, and also subscribe to Tony's channel as well, if you will. Uh, as well as subscribing to mine. So, uh, yeah, we've come right up to the top of the hill to try and get something, but to be honest, the snow is falling quite heavily. Everything's starting to look uh, far less sharper on the screen now with the influx of snow that's coming in in front of the subject. So uh, I think we're gonna head back down there. Well, on the way back down to the car, I spotted something. Now, I'm all about the big vistas the big panoramas, the uh, the big views. But every now and then I like to mix it up a little bit. As in previous videos, you will see that I like to shoot almost detail shots sometimes and try and find the smallest element in the biggest picture. And I have settled on this. Have a look at this. Don't know if you can see that. But basically, it's literally just that. If I can zoom in a little bit so that so that you can see it, probably very difficult to do. But that's it. It's just a little twiglet. But I love the little what appears to be some sort of foliage or a leaf at the end. You know, surviving in the harshest of conditions. And you know, it kind of reminds you that you might be stood in two and a half foot of snow up to your knees. And uh or well, two foot in my case. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it can get very, very harsh and very wintry and very bleak up here in the winter, which is, which is fine by me. But you've got to think that when most people are enjoying these views in the summer, when the grass is green and lush and the trees have flowered and bloomed, that actually this life form has to survive in some pretty harsh winters, you know, in sub-zero conditions. It's got to survive all throughout the year. And, uh, you know, my sort of previous training as a, as a nurse, I spent three years training as a nurse recently, uh, before I turned pro. And I understand the fragility of life and, uh, and you know, how, how tough it is sometimes for things to survive uh, in the harshest conditions, in the harshest times. And in a weird way, I kind of associate nature and landscapes in a similar way, I guess. I look at trees as a form of nature's human beings. They grow from a seed and they grow into something magnificent. They contribute to the world, to the atmosphere. Um, they help us survive. And then eventually they wither and they die and they go back into the ground. And it's pretty much the same as what we do. Uh, so I have an affinity with trees, but uh, I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. I mean, as I pan around through the trees here, the, the light here is sublime, absolutely gorgeous. But we've got some blue sky coming through and some lovely light in the background. And there's uh, Tony again doing his bit. But look at that. Isn't that just fantastic? Just fantastic. No better way to spend a Thursday afternoon in winter.
Welcome back. Now you'll notice that I have not stood in a field full of snow laden trees. I am in fact home and editing the images for this blog. Reason for that being is that we returned after the last batch of images that you have just seen to our original shooting location first thing this morning only to find all the snow had dropped from the trees. So what was an absolutely glorious scene in the morning that we thought we would return to when we did, there was nothing there. So, and I hadn't filmed an end of video speech, so this is it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, thanks for watching. It's, um, I've got a couple of more videos to put together from my time uh, in the Outer Hebrides over the Christmas and New Year period. So they'll be coming out in this uh, next sort of uh, few days. Um, but until then, I hope you've enjoyed this very, very brief video on a fantastic day's photography in the snow. And uh, if you have enjoyed it, feel free to uh, subscribe wherever it is and click the little notification bell next to it and you'll be told the next time I post a video. Uh, but until then, thanks for watching. Um, yeah. See you next time. Bye-bye for now.